Hey guys, Happy New Year. I hope all of you that are watching had a good Christmas and New Year or Hanukkah or whatever holiday is that you might celebrate with your family. I hope it was a great time. So, hey, I thought today I would uh, show you my bio settings that I'm using to run the 7960X at 5.2 gigahertz. thought some of you might be interested in that, especially since I've uh, recently switched from the uh, Asus uh, ROG Rampage uh, Apex board over to the X299 Dart. So uh, we'll jump into the BIOS here in just a little bit. Before we do that, uh, I want to kind of give you a walkthrough um, on this system, uh, how it's configured and what I'm using for cooling because with a CPU like a 7960X or a 7980XE, uh, pushing it 5.1, 5.2 gigahertz is going to get really hot. So you're gonna to have to have a really good thermal solution in place if you plan on doing anything like Cinebench or W Prime benchmarks because uh, it's not gonna work out well for you if you're just using normal water cooling uh, and certainly not with air cooling. So um, let's uh, let's do that now and take a look. So before we uh, have a look at the BIOS settings for this 5.2 gigahertz overclock, take a look at the system. We've got an X299 dark motherboard and 7960X CPU. We've got 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX 4000 RAM overclocked to 4200. We've got the RTX 2080 Ti XC2 Ultra GPU along with the Hydro Copper block. We've got a couple of XSPC 360 millimeter radiators with the fans and push pull. And in addition to the uh, Swift Tech pump down underneath, we've got these two XSPC 270 uh, photon pump and reservoir combinations. This fan that you see up on top, as well as the cloth, black cloth that I have around each of the quick disconnect fittings here, is are there because I am using this half horsepower 700 watt chiller to push really cold air through this or cold water through this system. So that'll get it down nice and cold, but not cold enough for condensation. This fan blowing uh, warmer room air across the metal surfaces uh, helps mitigate the possibility of condensation. But where that really stands to occur is when I bypass the radiators. So for serious benching like Cinebench and W Prime for the CPU, I will disconnect that uh, return return line that takes the water back to the chiller. And I'll hook it up directly to the GPU out and then on the pressure hose or the uh, outlet from the chiller I will disconnect this fitting and connect it directly to the CPU in. So that completely bypasses those radiators and that's when we see the 68 degrees Celsius uh, temperature drop. So let me push this back into place. Just wanted to give you guys an idea of how I was cooling this beast because it won't do it using just the radiators. Uh, 5.2 gigahertz is a little bit unreasonable for that. So now that that's out of the way, we can go ahead and jump into the BIOS settings and I'll be right back. Before we get into these settings, I just really want to emphasize the importance of having a really uh, robust thermal solution if you're going to try these settings. Uh, you don't want to uh, overheat your CPU that'll shorten its life especially running at higher voltages so you really need to pay close attention to your thermals if you're running uh, a CPU intensive benchmark like Cinebench or W Prime or an ADA64 CPU stress test you don't want to just cook your CPU now that being said if you have a really good ordinary uh, liquid cooling solution things like uh, Firestrike, 3D Mark 11, Time Spy, uh, you're probably going to be um, in the safe zone, but uh, you know the CPU won't get that hot running those benchmarks. But you will you will limit your max uh, CPU overclock stability if you keep that uh, CPU below around 30 degrees uh, Celsius. The colder, the better. Uh, you'll be able to push that uh, core clock up higher um, without 
programs like Cinebench and W Prime 1024 uh, crashing to the desktop or hanging or blue screening. So with that said, let's go ahead and start looking at these settings, all right? The X299 Dark has a nice looking home screen. You hit your enter key and go into the setup. On this screen, you'll see that I have my uh, multiplier control set to ratio limit with a multiplier at 52 for all cores. On this next screen here, you can see that I have my mesh ratio set to 32. Uh, no AVX, two or three offsets. My B clock is just slightly above 100 so that it shows me the actual core clocks. Uh, you can see what I have set for the other voltages on this screen. Bear in mind that each CPU is different and what works for mine might not work for yours. You might be able to go lower than I have and you might need to, to bump that voltage up a little bit more. So uh, consider these voltages and values as a starting point for your system. It will be controlled by a number of variables including the bin quality of the CPU as well as the temperatures that your CPU is running. Moving right along over to the memory tab, you can see the settings that I'm using for running 4200. I've got the voltage set to 1.5. You can see what I have there for my timings. Most of the other settings on this screen are stock except for TRFC and TREFI. Um, everything else is set to auto. But one setting that you do want to uh, enable is the force memory retraining. I have that set to disabled rather than auto. Um, I find that I actually get uh, better results doing that. Going over to the advanced tab, uh, there's a number of things. We're, we're going to just look at a couple. The CPU configuration menu, uh, first one right there at the top. You can see that I have uh, C state set to auto. That uh, That's managed by the motherboard and the firmware, but I have virtualization disabled. On the next menu down, the PCIe Express, um, the CPU... Uh, uh, storage, I have everything set to disabled. Uh, I have uh, my M.2 settings, as you see there on your screen. That allows me to run both M.2 slots on the motherboard, as well as uh, two adding cards with two more NVMe drives. The screen, um, there's not a whole lot to do except for your fan controls. But the 80 port mode configuration, I have that set to DPU, uh, I'm sorry, CPU die temperature. And that allows the LED on the motherboard next to the power button to show me the CPU die temperature. Um, if you're running Windows 7, I found that it's problematic getting it to, to install if I have that set to enabled, so I've set it to disabled. I've configured my USB installation stick for UEFI mode. Then I set UEFI mode with CSM support enabled in the BIOS and I had no trouble installing Windows 7 on this motherboard. I had no success with it. Uh, with the setting for Windows 7 installation set to enabled or using uh, MBR for my disk. So just uh, heads up there, if you have trouble installing Windows 7, try those settings and I think you'll be just fine. Once you have your overclock working, you're going to want to go over to the save and exit menu and save your profile. Just give it a name. I think you'll find that that'll save you a lot of hassle. You can apply that, that profile on the fly anytime you want to. makes life really easy. You can also set up profiles for other uh, clock speeds. So it uh, makes life super easy. It's a nice feature on these high-end motherboards. So let's take a few minutes again and talk about um, our thermal management. One thing that's really important if you're using something like chilled water or something more exotic is... Uh, you got to be aware of condensation. Now, I live in a very dry desert area, and the relative humidity is very low. So it's not a huge concern, but it's still something I, I have to watch out for. If I bypass the radiators, and I'm only circulating chilled water from the chiller through the CPU and GPU and back to the chiller again, it gets much colder. Uh, the radiators work well if I want to do some overclocked gaming keeps the CPU and GPU nice and frosty but above the dew point. So what I use, as you can see in this uh, image here, I bought this uh, thermometer. I got it off of Amazon. It's a very, very simple device. It shows me my room temperature and it shows me the relative humidity in my room. So with that information, I jump over to a website. 
dpcalc.org. That is D as in David, P as in Paul, C A L C dot org. Um, that allows me to establish what the dew point is in my room. If I take the the temperature and the relative humidity, I set the sliders there, and it tells me in the third column that you see what the dew point is. I know that I need to keep my temperature slightly above that to not have uh, a lot of sweating going on. But as you saw um, earlier in the video, I do have that uh, fan sitting on top that's blowing air across. Um, helps uh, prevent the accumulation of, of uh, moisture. And those quick disconnect fittings are really thick metal. They get super cold. They really hold the, the cold more than the, uh, the clear tubing does. And so uh, I started noticing some uh, little droplets developing on those, so I wrapped those with the black cloth that I showed you earlier in the video. So what kind of results can you expect from 5.2 gigahertz on the 7960X CPU? Well, in the Cinebench R11.5, uh, you can expect about a, a 49.54 uh, points. Now, now that's, you know, using the, the, water, the uh, chilled water cooling it will not even pass in a bench unless I have that connected directly to um, the chiller and bypassing the radiators. The CPU gets too hot and it'll it'll crash if you try it. Um, with the uh, Cinebench R15, you can expect about 4,630 uh, Cinebench points. So a really nice result. Couldn't be happier with that. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to see similar results on your end. So. Uh, just a couple of, there's a nice screenshot that you can take a look at. Um, but yeah, the cooling makes a huge difference. Uh, can't understate the importance of that if you want to get good results in your benchmark tests. So uh, W Prime 1024M completes in a, about 1.29 uh, seconds, which is pretty amazing. Uh, w Prime is a, uh, 32M is a short test, but it really uh, shows you how fast it can crunch some numbers. The 1024M is obviously a, a much longer test, and uh, it's a little bit more stressful on the CPU. So if you find that you can pass the 32M, but not the 1024M, it's probably because it's getting uh, too hot. When I say hot, um, it's not really hot, but it's too warm for the clock speed you're running, and it, it takes more voltage the warmer it gets. So the cooler you can keep it, uh, the less voltage you can use. So... Anyway, that uh, wraps up our video. I hope you found it informative and enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. I'd love to have you as a subscriber on my channel. Uh, my next video is probably going to uh, uh, highlight what I do on my uh, 2080 Ti for a shunt mod. I did that on the 1080 Ti and it worked phenomenally. I see the same kind of stupid nonsense behavior with uh, uh, from an NVIDIA with the 2080 Ti where the clocks are bouncing around all over the place and the power limits are ridiculously low. So I think I'm going to fix that. And uh, so more likely than not, that'll be my next video. So stay tuned and we'll look at that together. Have a nice weekend. Take care and God bless.